this here. This morning, while it was still dark and Anne was on shift, she heard this like clink noise uh, in the back of the cockpit area. Went over to go look and found this piece. Uh, because it was dark, we couldn't really see where it came from. But then as soon as it got light, I figured it out and it came from our topping lift. The topping lift line is still there, but it just backed itself out off that clasp. So I'm gonna go up and try and fix it. So here's the topping lift itself. It connects to right here. That's where that bolt goes through. And from the looks of it, it looks like it's just a touch bent. So I may have to get another tool and kind of bend it back. So we'll see. So Ann made a soft shackle and I'll go use that to secure the topping lift to the back end of the boom until we can get either a replacement or have someone bend it in the place for us. <laughs> Today's fun science project is making bread. What do you think about that? I think it sounds yummy. What do you like most about bread? The smell when it's freshly out and putting butter and jam and honey on it. Yum, yum. yum. All right, so we have our ingredients, waiting for the yeast to do its thing, and then we'll mix it all up, put it in these pans, let it rise, and then bake it and eat it. I let the bread rise for right about an hour. So here you can see what it's looking like. So now I'm gonna knead this some more. I'm gonna put it into these two tins after I butter them up and then I'm sticking it in the oven for about 45 minutes and then we'll have yummy bread. Crazy how following directions gives you nice fluffy bread. Yum. Can't wait. All right, just pull it out of the oven. We're gonna let that rest for a couple minutes and then it's gonna be bon appetit. Yum yum. shows up and I hear some more noise and the next thing I know there's two more uh, so this is crazy I mean we're like at least a good 200 miles from Ascension and another 900 miles from anywhere else and we get three three visitors so Bob Marley eat your heart out right there's four right there just on our solar panel I think there's easily, easily 10 birds that have made our house a sanctuary for the evening.
Very, very cool. We have hitchhikers on our boat, but one has made it inside the boat. You should have heard me scream just a moment ago. Dennis is sleeping and now I don't know what to do with this bird, but I don't want him to poop inside. Yuck. Obviously I was unsuccessful at screaming and woke Dennis up, which I feel badly because it's hard to get sleep as a crew of two. But he is up and gonna help me on getting this bird off the boat. Brown natties. Oh. It looks like he did something on the stairs, you little nasty bird. Yeah. I think what freaked me out earlier is the bird touched me. but then he went back down when I screamed. Where do we have a um, dustpan? Dustpan? Uh, yes. Yeah. Now that the bird is out, look at this. I'm gonna excuse the shadow. It's like a little fish or something nasty. And then I don't know what this is on the step right here, but I'm gonna clean it up. A thermal cooker because inside you do your one pot meal in here. You bring it to a boil for 15 minutes and put it in here for one hour and then you're good. So what I'm going to try right now is to make yogurt in here. So I have water boiling or heating up in here. I'm going to add my milk. milk up then I'll add a bit of yogurt it's called your starter you need yogurt to make yogurt and then you put it in there and once it's all heated up you put it in the thermal cooker and let it sit and then you should have yogurt when it's all said and done great so I have the water in here and I'm heating it up um, and then I'm waiting for the milk to get to 80 degrees Celsius and then I'll cool down the milk to 50 degrees Celsius and then add my yogurt Cool down my yogurt to 50 degrees Celsius, or uh, sorry, my warmed milk. And now I'm adding just some yogurt that we got in Ascension Island. So I'm gonna add that in. It's very liquidy yogurt. Um, stir it in. Then I'm gonna take my lid and put it back on. This warm jar into the thermal cooker. Oh crap. I didn't really account for the lid not fitting. So I'm going to take the lid back off and remember that next time.
All right, we are getting close to Fernando. We're pretty excited, but not sure if we'll make it by nightfall. So here we are. And this purple rum wine is where we want to be heading to get to Fernando. So we're going to center the main and go from a 320 to a 280. Can you mention in nice when you came around? Oh my god. That would have been crazy. Really, we, well, the thing is, it's easy if you go beyond the orange field and then come in. Yeah. Yes. We yeah. just came directly. Oh, like you, you did. Through there? Through yes. all the more fields. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. And then you have to go the roads are lit off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what. Yeah. So at night it's tough. And yeah. there's no moon last night. So. We don't have a I think there's no sugar. That's probably all in that other folder. Oh, it's in her folder. I have it on the boat. Oh, you can watch over. Okay. Good. I will bring it because then she can come. She hasn't, um, let's see. No. Uh, Tara for Trace. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. No land. Only Batu. Solamente Batu. Yeah. No, you? Yeah, long time. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you what do you, what do you recommend we do when we first get to port? Well, there's only one thing you can do. You have to go to the first available bar. The FAB. The FAB. And so when you're in Brazil, the drink that you need to order is the capoeira. Yeah. And so we will try it and see if you like it. <laughs> All right. And so we're sitting there in St. Helena, we go to the channel where the Troy the fuel guy is. And he's got some pieces parts and he's got 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 18, and we needed 17 uh, for the locking nut size, but nope, didn't have it. And what's that for? <laughs> the locking nuts for the steering assembly. Shanti, it's your first time on land since we left South Africa. Fernando de Naranja, Brazil, or earlier this morning, uh, went out and checked in with our boat neighbors on Leviathan and had lunch and a couple of, what are those drinks called? Caparinhas. Yes, they were delicious, but very <laughs> sugary. Anyway, we're trying out our new dive equipment right here around the boat and we've seen lots of dolphins and whatnot, so we're pretty excited. very lucky to have another couple help us get our dinghy back in the water from the beach because the tide went out so it was a long distance and I don't know if we put them on incorrectly but those beach wheels did not work in the wet sand at all like we imagined anyway so we finally get the boat in the water it was a little not too much of a fiasco and um, the great news is after all that hard work it's amazing how just tightening up the screws nuts bolts fix the problem. Super easy, but live and learn.
rock and then Dennis found fishing line stuck under the boat so he is in the process of cutting that off the bottom of our boat so that's interesting but it didn't seem to cause us any problems so we're very thankful for that. Is there still more? Well, that's the last of it. So how do you think the fishing line got cut under our starboard no clue. port side? No clue. Maybe we had it out when we did a turn, like bring a sail in or something. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And then we have a piece still missing on the engine as well, on the prop. A piece missing? Yeah, I'll have to show you when I can okay. look at the camera better. All right. in our container so we bought it ages ago with the help of a friend of mine Fraser who's a big cave diver he recommended going straight to the back plate uh, he's gone through a series of he says he could open a dive shop with all his choices and this is what he ended up on he said just go ahead and start with this it's fantastic less bulky less need for as many weights so we're looking forward to trying it out we got our dive gear finally set up. It said it took an hour, I don't know how many hours it took us uh, watching videos, trying to follow the written instructions, but we are finally ready to go. Check this out. Shotsy. Yes. There's our dive gear with the back plates. Pretty excited to try them out. We got our underwater camera and excuse the mess over there. We had to pull all that out to get uh, the tanks out of our lazarette. on to me. I just grab whatever cup has the most in it. So he's like trying to say, no, 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 you only stick with your cup. No, no, no. <laughs> provisioning with our socks that we got from a consignment store in South Africa for 25 cents each and we got lots of wine, a few bottles of liquor and we just store them in our handy little ottoman here. They made it to match and my favorite color, one of my favorite colors, second favorite, you have to buy a shirt. When you go. We have a visitor. Yeah. I like stroking new pussy in different places. 
That cat's not gonna leave you alone. You have a new friend. Yeah, I know. What kind of bracelet is that? This bracelet? Yeah. This is what makes our dinghy motor go. It's the emergency stop. So when you pop it off, the engine goes and without it, the engine doesn't do anything. Yep. So it's my new bracelet. So the clipped ear implies that the cat's been spayed neutered uh, because a lot of islands have indigenous bird populations that are very susceptible to outside threats, non-native species. Uh, so yeah, so the birds are safe. to shit on our boat. We like to bring our own straws to be environmental, even though Fernando is a plastic free, so you get cardboard straws, but they always collapse and they're not really that great. So we like our straws, but when I take it, we finish this drink, and then you need to like clean it off. You don't want to waste any, any drop of the caparinas. 